If you've ever spent much time watching ASMR videos, you've probably encountered the term binaural before, or maybe phrases like 3D sound, and you've probably even seen those wacky microphones with ears on them. And if you're like me, these binaural sounds will trigger you way more effectively than uh, non-binaural audio for some reason. And over the past few years, binaural audio and binaural recordings have almost become a, a status symbol amongst ASM artists and a uh, signifier in video titles to indicate some sort of high quality. But have you ever wondered why some of these binaural recordings sound so much more realistic than others despite recording quality? And how is binaural audio actually different from regular stereo audio? And should we be considering these setups with two regular microphones to be binaural? I'm going to try to answer all these questions and offer up some advice to ASM artists uh, to get their binaural audio sounding more realistic. And hopefully we'll be able to clear up a few misconceptions about what binaural audio actually is. Before we can define binaural audio, we need to understand the idea of sound localization. Sound localization is a person's ability to identify the direction a sound is coming from and how far away it is. Humans have the ability to localize sound in any direction, be it left, right, up, down, in front, and behind. If you close your eyes, you're able to tell that birds are tweeting in the tree above you, or that a river is babbling down at your feet. And just like how our eyes can tell us where an object is and how far away it is, our ears can do the same thing with sounds. Let's keep this analogy going. You're probably familiar with the idea of visual depth perception, the ability to tell how far away an object is by sight. There are several clues that help you do this, such as further away objects being smaller, or objects at different distances being slightly in or out of focus, and the slight differences in the two images that reach your eyes, also known as parallax. These visual cues can be grouped into two categories, monocular cues, or techniques we use that are not reliant on having two eyes, and binocular cues, techniques that are reliant on having two eyes. Note that having both monocular and binocular cues provide the most convincing recreation of reality, and the more cues you have, the more convincing the visuals can be. For instance, video games and movies have strictly monocular cues, and generally you can tell how far away things are supposed to be, but because they like binocular cues, um, they may feel a little bit flat and not as immersive as the real world, which has both. In a very similar way, we have several auditory cues that we can use to determine where sounds are coming from and how far away they are. We can even lump these into two categories like before. Monaural cues, techniques that are not reliant on having two ears, and binaural cues, techniques that are reliant on having two ears. So there we go. Binaural audio is audio that uses binaural cues in order to utilize a listener's ability to localize sound, but that doesn't mean it should only use binaural cues. Just like with monocular and binocular visual cues, the most realistic and effective way to use a listener's sound localization is to use a combination of both monaural and binaural cues. In fact, only using binaural cues without any monaural cues will make the audio seem flatter, less dimensional, less realistic. The more cues you use, and the more true to reality they are, the more realistic the audio will seem. These cues range from fairly obvious to ridiculously subtle, so let's start by listing some examples of binaural cues because they're a bit easier to explain. Imagine you have sound coming from the left side of your head. Hey, what's going on? The sound travels through the air and eventually reaches both ears, but there will always be small differences between the signals your ears actually hear. First is how loud the sound is, or amplitude. Your left ear will hear something louder than the right because it's closer to the sound source. 
Second is the time delay. Because the sound is closer to your left ear, it'll reach there first. Uh, this is also known as the interaural time difference. The wider your head is, the larger this delay will be. Finally, your ears will hear slightly different frequencies, just like how music from another room will sound bassier and lower in frequency, or how thunder is a low rumble from far away, but a sharp crack from up close. The sound moving all the way over to your right ear will be bassier as well, because more of the high frequency audio will die out over the longer distance. There's also something known as the head shadow effect. Essentially, the sound on your left hello doesn't just go around your head to reach your right ear, it goes through it as well. As the sound moves through your head, tingling your brain on the way, it gets shaped in similar ways to the cues listed before. It'll have lower amplitude, experience a time delay, and be a lower frequency compared to the sound heard by your left ear. Every person has a uniquely shaped head with different bone structures, fat to muscle ratios, skin thickness, etc. So different binaural recordings may sound more or less realistic to you, depending on how closely the geometry and density of the recording dummy head matches your own. Just like how people have different eyeball geometries and densities that require slightly different glasses prescriptions, people have different head shapes and densities that match up with slightly different binaural recordings. It's not a one-size-fits-all type of deal. The last type of binaural cues we'll talk about are dynamic binaural cues. And you've probably seen these before, and you probably think they're adorable. Um, you know that thing that dogs do when they hear something weird or unfamiliar? And they, they tilt their head while looking at whatever is making the sound? Mm -hmm. That's a dynamic binaural cue. By moving your head around, you change how the sound reaches your ears. Your brain compares the signals you hear now with those from before and figure out um, how to pinpoint the source. Now, you can't really do this in a YouTube video unless you've got a virtual reality headset or something like that. But you can utilize the same mechanism by moving a sound source from one point to another continuously. Uh, it's much easier to tell when a sound is uh, from where a sound is coming from if it's moving a little. Now... Binaural cues are great, and they definitely make up a large part of what makes binaural audio sound realistic, but they have a severe limitation. For instance, a sound coming from directly in front of you will hit both ears at the exact same time, so there will be no difference between what's heard by your left and right ears. The same goes for sounds coming from directly behind you, or above you, or below you. Yet, in the real world, you're clearly able to tell when a sound is coming from above or below you, so there must be some other mechanism at play here. Um, binaural cues alone don't paint a fully immersive picture. This is where monaural cues come in. Again, monaural cues are just cues that don't rely on the difference in sound between your two ears. First off, further away sounds will sound quieter and lower in frequency. Again, think of thunder or distant music. But this doesn't really help in letting you know what direction a sound is coming from. The most prominent monaural cue for determining the direction a sound comes from is how your outer ear, or pinna, shapes the sound entering your ear canal. The sound bounces off all the little grooves, reflects off of all the nooks and crannies, and eventually gets funneled onto your eardrum. Depending on the direction the sound came from, the reflections will be slightly different. For instance, a sound coming from in front of you uh, might just be scooped in, but sound from above you will have to bounce off of these upward-facing surfaces before entering your ear canal. Sound from behind you will have to go around or through your pinna, losing some amplitude and removing some of the higher frequencies uh, in the sound in the process. In more technical terms, your pinna creates pockets of standing wave resonance and acts as a rather complicated audio filter. And because of their physical size being rather small, they have a greater effect on complex sounds with higher frequency. And it's not just your pinna either. Sound will bounce off of your head, shoulders, and torso in uh, similar ways. And the delay, amplitude, and frequency changes will all contribute to the monaural cues. 
There are also things like the Doppler effect and reverb, uh, which fall under the scope of monaural cues, but we'll ignore those for now. So while binaural cues only provide one dimension of left to right, monaural cues fill in the other two dimensions of sound localization. But at the same time, monaural cues are not as obvious or easily discerned as binaural cues. If you want audio to sound realistically uh, in three dimensions and be immersive, uh, you need a healthy combination of both binaural and monaural cues. So here's the thing. What's the actual difference between this 3DO microphone and this setup of two regular microphones spaced apart by a head width? Both setups would be able to detect uh, several binaural cues, like differences in amplitude, time delay, and frequency, uh, reaching either side of the head. Uh, and neither of the setups really have things like head shadow. Uh, in fact, the only major difference is the fact that the 3DO has ear-shaped rubber modifying the sound entering the microphones, and the setup with two regular microphones does not. In other words, the difference is that the 3DO utilizes more monaural cues, not binaural ones. As a result, the 3DO will generally sound more realistic and allow for more effective sound localization, but not because it's more binaural than the two regular microphones. Uh, you might ask, isn't that just stereo audio at that point? Is a Blue Yeti stereo polar plot binaural? Can we describe any stereo audio as binaural? So, it pays to be precise here. Stereo audio and its counterpart, mono audio, describes a completely different aspect of the audio. Mono, or monophonic audio, is audio that sends the same signal to the left and right channels of your headphones. And stereo, or stereophonic audio, is audio that can send different signals to the left and right channels of your headphones. Monophonic audio can have monaural cues, uh, and stereophonic audio can have both monaural and binaural cues. The fact that monophonic audio can sound 3D as well is probably a shock to most people, but remember, uh, sounds coming from directly in front of you, above you, behind and below you, are all sending the same exact signals to your left and right ears. If we define binaural audio as any audio with a single binaural cue, then yeah, pretty much any stereophonic audio can be considered binaural, but that's generally not what people mean when they say binaural. Most people are generally referring to the 3D effect of sound localization, and there's no clear-cut line that says one bit of audio is 3D or not. You have a spectrum of audio uh, where having more monaural and binaural cues leads to more effective sound localization. As a result, all binaural recordings may be stereophonic, uh, but not all stereophonic recordings are binaural. And that's fine, binaural audio is not some magic cure-all that is guaranteed to enhance ASMR. ASMR is a highly individualized experience that is triggered by different sorts of sounds by different people. Some people may like stereophonic non-binaural audio more than binaural audio. But if your goal is to create more realistic 3D sound, then you should be trying to implement as many monaural and binaural cues as you can, as accurately as you can. There should really be a word for this, something that describes audio that uses many monaural and binaural cues to create effective 3D sound localization. I propose the term polyoral. And while we're at it, let's throw in anaural too for audio without any monaural or binaural cues. So let's do a quick rundown of a few examples. If you've recorded twice on a mono microphone and put different audio into the left and right channels, uh, that's not binaural, it's stereophonic anaural. If you're using a binaural microphone but your voice is so quiet that only That's stereophonic monaural audio. If you've set up two microphones and talked at them while they're recording at the same time, this is technically stereophonic binaural audio, but 
Again, this does not necessarily mean that it'll be super convincing and have a full 3D effect. There's a lack of head shadow and pinna filtering, uh, holding it back from being polyoral. If you're recording ear-to-ear -ear audio on a binaural microphone, but don't include any sound when you're moving your head from one to the other, uh, then you're missing out on a bunch of dynamic binaural cues. This is also only utilizing one dimension of sound. If you're using every monaural and binaural effect at your disposal, moving ear to ear while making continuous sounds and moving in and out, all while staying at eye level to the listener, then you're creating polyoral two-dimensional sound. Uh, but if you're moving sound above, below, behind, in front, and to the left and right of the listener, using every monaural and binaural effect in your arsenal while moving closer and further away as you do it, then congratulations, you are creating fully 3D polyoral audio. I want to clarify one more time that polyoral audio and 3D sound are not at all synonymous with being the best ASMR experience or anything like that. Having 3D audio doesn't make your ASMR inherently better, and having monaural, binaural, or polyoral audio doesn't make it inherently better either. Similarly, stereophonic anaural audio without any sound localization isn't inherently a bad thing. It's perfectly fine and may even trigger some people even more than polyoral 3D audio. ASMR is a highly individualized experience, and it's triggered by different sorts of sounds by different people. However, mislabeling videos as binaural is inaccurate at best and misleading at worst. This is something that many ASM artists, new and old, popular and unknown, spanning all demographics, seems to have a real hard time with, and understandably so. It's definitely not something that we really experience in any other form of media other than ASMR. But if we as a community can talk about our niche corner of the internet with better precision and fidelity, then I think it can only help everyone, listeners and creators alike, in getting content from the people that love making it to the people that would enjoy it the most.